The system is falling apart in front of our eyes. The old world is collapsing. Hurling trillions into the market weekly, and it's still falling apart. This is epic. Fed goes to 0%, injects billions into the stock market, and Dow Jones plummets. This is the same as someone in the hospital who is getting drips, injections to keep them alive, and their tolerance builds up, so they need more and more, then their veins collapse, they go septic and die. The Dow and the S&P 500 are having the worst month since October 1987. Repo doesn't work anymore because they've done it too many times, and the credit markets are saturated. So far, the latest Fed injections haven't done much to lift the Dow. The Fed's gone to 0%, and the quantitative easing levels are unprecedentedly high. The Dow opened down 10% this morning with the S&P 500 down 7.5% tripping the 7% circuit breaker, which stopped trading for 15 minutes. This is after the Fed on Sunday unexpectedly dropped the Fed funds rate by 100 basis points to virtually 0% and said it would add at least $700 billion to its balance sheet. While the indexes have recovered a bit, they are still down around 7% as of noon and keep an eye out for a dead cat bounce. The New York Fed announced Monday it would conduct an additional overnight repo operation at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. This operation will be conducted for up to an aggregate offered amount of $500 billion. This while Kudlow announces that the Trump administration is readying another $400 billion boosts to the economy. This is called desperation. The Dow closed at 19,827.25 on President Trump's inauguration day, January 20, 2017. Today the Dow stands at 21,425. A gain of nearly 1,600 points, or a gain of 7% in just over three years, or 2.3% per year. If President Trump were a fund manager, his performance would be among the worst in recorded financial history. Who could have ever guessed that you can cure a disease by central banks simultaneously printing cash? The Fed is stuck throwing even more liquidity at the problem. There is no way the dollar survives this kinda insanity. Before computers, the printing presses served as a break on how much money the Fed could produce. Today there are no restraints on money creation, and we are witnessing the results. The governments and central banks around the world have not learned to take note from those that know the dangers of embarking on monetary madness by throwing trillions upon trillions of digital currency backed by thin air at failing economies. The same people are unable to interpret the past, read the present, and to imagine and empower the future. They are living a life without a punchline, clueless about what to do amid the catastrophe that is currently unfolding. A worrying situation for those with hard-earned savings that are diminishing each day with devalued currencies. Central banks are able to print currency but will be unable to print confidence. As of February 2020, federal debt held by the public is $17.23 trillion, and intragovernmental holdings were $6.02 trillion, for a total national debt of $23.3 trillion. Goldman Sachs now says that the US GDP could fall 5% in the second quarter. That would mark the biggest annualized drop since the fourth quarter of 2008. The financial Frankenstein debt bubble has not yet burst, but it will. The bubblegum law states the bigger the bubble, the greater the chance it will blow up in your face. The Fed bubblegum law states, so long as it is not in my face, and they pay me for it, I will keep making bubblegum out of nothing. This is the biggest scam in history, the private federal bank creates money with a click on their computer and buys your house with made up money and then they rent your house back to you and while you are paying them rent you are also paying them interest on the money they created. The trouble with being honest and trusting is that shysters will take advantage of you. All of this is so ridiculous and nightmarish. Those people only care about keeping the financial markets afloat. They care nothing about Americans sickening and dying. The coronavirus has nothing to do with financial markets. And, it has nothing to do with them ushering in more trillions of dollars of debt. They will use any excuse. The government asking everyone not to take their cash out of the bank will strike even more fear in the hearts of men. They are doing the complete opposite of what they should be doing to calm the masses. Expect bank runs, food runs, and chaos in the streets. Bank closures already starting. New Orleans Capital One Bank is announcing this morning that it will temporarily close 12 branches in Louisiana. Toilet paper and water runs, now bank runs. But, we all saw this coming. 
Panic on Main Street and Panic on Wall Street, the end game is either global reset or all-out war. The world is about to change radically. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too, on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link, if you want to make a donation. Thank you. So this is what the death throes of the unsustainable debt-based system looks like do whatever you can to distract the populace as you throw trillions into the void daily to keep the illusion from falling apart. Print money out of nothing. Buy company stock. Eventually own all the companies. The public seems okay with it, so it will continue. I don't recall granting these guys the right to steal from my children every time they get a whim to do so. Funny how these arrogant people think they can control the economy. They do all the wrong things at the wrong time. The biggest funny is how people think they have intelligence in all of this. They don't. Politicians are finally getting through their thick skulls that the health and safety of the planet Trump stocks. I fully expect every G7 country to go into lockdown within the week. This will be a unique opportunity to write off the debt and to reset things. The circuit breaks tripped again, and the market is still below Friday's close. The Federal No Reserve Trade Desk piled in and tried to buy the indexes across the board on Friday at last minute just before the close according to my real-time charts. I see this all the time the Fed was trying to pump the market up. They were pumping it up Friday, getting ready for the announcement on Sunday afternoon regarding the zero interest rates. There are throngs of corporations lining up for public bailouts. Everything from airlines, to big oil and big pharma. And here is a heads up. You the taxpayer will be bailing them out. You have no power to say no. Your vote does not count. You have no voice. There are too many bubbles. Way too many. Premiums over spot on precious metals have started to climb. If rates are lowered midweek, people might want to get their funds out of banks. And nobody wants the stinking US treasuries, not even US banks who are drowning in them. Can you see the currency crisis coming? Under fiat money, debt is money. And money is wealth. Since the bond market low of 1981, every dollar borrowed and spent created at least two dollars of wealth, the spent dollar bounced around the GDP counted economy. A second dollar, an asset, a receivable, was placed on the bondholder's balance sheet. Two, or more, for one. Why it was magical. And for 39 years of bond bull market, as the price of debt rose, the quantity of it demanded by investors rose, too. So the price people were willing to pay skyrocketed, even as the total quantity in existence filled a veritable ocean of IOUs. Imagine an ocean, a million square miles but a foot deep. Today, a bond is floated, and instead of pricing at near zero yield, it prices significantly below that. The difference between last trade, near 100%, and now, a lot lower, comes off every other existing bond in the ocean. Imagine today's bond, is a single square mile. Its shortfall in price comes off every one of the million already in existence, even though only one bond traded. This is marginal value as it applies to the whole. We watch the price, and yield, of the 10-year note and 30-year bond. They recently hit all-time highs, low yield, but since this crisis grew and the Fed panicked, their prices are dropping. If that is the beginning of a trend, then the wealth in the bond ocean is set to evaporate across the board, taking with it unimaginable amounts of wealth and the wealth effect on stocks and the real economy. The Fed can print credit as long as someone will borrow it into existence. The Fed cannot print product or production. All it can do is debase the value of real capital, and this is what it did in spades. 39 years of debt growth deformed the US and world economies to serve debt-enabled demand instead of what would have occurred organically. Here is a useful metaphor, a town experiences a huge credit bubble, so its residents build 5,000 square feet mansions. When the bubble bursts, no one can afford to maintain, heat, cool, or pay the property taxes on said mansions, so they fall into disrepair and rot. Absent the credit bubble, residents would have built 1,800 square feet ranch houses, which they'd still be able to maintain. So the full effect of the bubble is to literally destroy what would have been, and destroy what was. Every industry now addicted to debt-fueled demand, medical services and insurance, the welfare state administration, higher ed, the old but hardly forgotten military-industrial complex, etc., grew to mountainous proportion these past 40 years. 
They are all unsustainable, and the people they employ face a catastrophic collapse in the demand for their services. It didn't have to be. We were all sold the big lie for a very long time. The banks are, on average, leveraged up 100 to 1 on derivatives. Throwing $6 trillion or even $100 trillion at the problem is like throwing a cough drop to a terminal pancreatic cancer patient. Tens of trillions in Federal Reserve digital currency won't get us out of this mess. All are begging now for a market close. Next, banks close their doors. Better get whatever you need out of the safety deposit box if you have one. The banksters are stealing everything. The peasantry will be starving to death while the oligarchs are all ordering new, bigger yachts. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too, on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link, if you want to make a donation. Thank you. Thank you.